Hi guys, this is Sadek from Garden.com and in this video, we'll show you how to fax the latest Pixel by Storm based on Android 15 onto OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform to form a guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done some C drive and as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Also, please add this to the path of the variables as well. For example, go to the start menu. I've shown this in my article as well so simply open this environmental variables in the system variables choose the path edit and add this path inside over here as well as you could see this is the path i have added when that is done click on ok and you may close it as well moving on you will now have to enable usb debugging and oem unlocking the debugging is required for adb command whereas oem unlocking is required to unlock the bluetooth on your phone so let's now enable both the toggles for that go to the settings menu on your phone then you have to go to about device version and tap on version number seven times this will enable developer option as you could see it's now enabled now go back again go back go to additional settings and developer options and enable the toggle next to oem unlocking as well as usb debugging you will get a prompt on your phone tap on ok you might get one more prompt in that prompt tap on allow and with this that debugging now enabled let's verify the same so go to the address bar of platform tools type in cmd hit enter this will launch command prompt inside the platform tools folder as you could see now type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use any other USB cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB fixes and ver verify that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, you will now have to unlock the Bluetooth on your phone. Do know that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and what as well. If that's all well and good. You could refer to my guide and get the job done or the video as well. In short, boot the phone to the fast boot mode. Then use the fast boot flashing unlock command. You will then get a prompt on your phone. Use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and then press the power key to confirm. With this, the bootloader will be unlocked and you will be taken to the OS. Once you are inside the OS, please make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again on your phone. Once that is done, let's move ahead and now you may download the ROM file from here. So for now, you have to get hold of the Pixel OS GF variant ROM, the one for the OnePlus 9 Pro. For now, I'm using the OnePlus 9 Pro. So this is the ROM. And let's move ahead with the next step. So now you have to boot the phone to the fast boot mode. For that, simply type in the command ADB reboot bootloader. Hit enter. Your phone should now boot into fast boot mode in a few seconds. And once that happens, type in fast boot devices and verify that you are getting an ID as well. If you're not having any ID on your PC, then please install the fast boot drivers onto your PC. This ID I'm talking about. You may install the drivers from my guide. This is the guide in the video. Please install the drivers from here. Once that is done, right click on the Windows icon and choose Device Manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the ID next to Fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in Fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So let's now flash the ROM file that is over here. So first and foremost, if you are on OnePlus 9, then you have to, if you are on OnePlus 9, then you have to be on Oxygen OS 13.1 firmware, it's compulsory. But if you are on OnePlus 9 Pro, it's not an issue. You may either be on the 13 or 14 both. So for OnePlus 9 users, if you are on Android 14, then you simply do a downgrade by flashing the Fireboot ROM for Oxygen OS 13 to get the job done. I am again repeating, OnePlus 9 users, if they are on Android 14, they must simply flash the Fireboot ROM for Android 13 to get the job done for OnePlus 9 Pro. It's not a cause of any concern. They may be on either 13 or 14 both will work moreover you would also root the rom via the kernel su next i'll show you how to get this job done in this video as well but first let's flash the rom so for that download the firmware zip file for your phone from here once you've got the firmware file extract it onto your pc this is the firmware for my phone do the extraction over here extract all then open the folder okay it will take a few seconds let's wait for that to happen now go inside the folder and simply open the file of the batch file which is over here i suppose run this flasher.bat open this it will now flash all the required files onto your phone it will take around a couple of minutes so let's wait for that to happen so guys once the flashing is done your phone will automatically go to the recovery mode as you could see is the pixel os recovery you will now close this window as well and from the cmd window from the recovery first of please do a format data so choose factory reset format data and again format data the reset is now done as you could see that data wipe is now complete when that is done go back select apply update apply from adb and now first of transfer the rom zip file inside the platform tools folder so let me do so at that as well 
the ROM zip file is over here. Copy it and transfer it here inside the folder of platform tools. Once that is done, rename it to something shorter. So let's do the renaming to ROM and the name becomes ROM.zip. Now open the CMD window over here and type in the command adb sideload file name which is rom.zip and the flashing will now start and could take up to around four to five minutes so let's wait for that to happen so guys the flashing is now complete if you want to flash any other zip file then first tap on yes your phone will undergo a reboot to recovery and then you will flash the required zip file on the other hand else tap on no in my case i don't want to flash any zip file because the rom is already g -app, so i don't want to flash any other zip file so i am tapping on no and finally, once you have flashed all the files, just tap on reboot system now. Just let me verify it once as well. So yes, when the flashing has been done, just tap on reboot system. There's no need to do a format data after flashing. Just do a formatting before the flashing. And once you have flashed it, if you want to flash any other zip file, tap on yes or else tap on no. And finally, tap on reboot system. Your phone will now go to the OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time. That's all normal. With that said, let's wait for the boot logo to appear or the boot animation to appear, which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and they might now appear in around four to five seconds. So let's wait for that to happen and then we will have a look at the ROM feature as well. But first, let's wait for the boot logo to appear. And as you could see, this is the pixel boot animation. So the flashing has been done. Now give it around four to five more seconds for the ROM to move to the setup screen. So with this, we are now inside the setup. So let's get started. If you want, you may connect the phone to the Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the data. But for now, I am skipping that to fasten the process of the setup. I am skipping all of that, but it's all up to you. So let's accept the terms and condition as well. Accept this as well. And with this, we should now be inside the OS in a few more seconds. Skip this. And that's just about it. We are inside the Pixel OS based on Android 15. It has all the required GI packages. For example, the Google app, Play Store, Photos, Gmail, that's just about it. No third party app as such. This is the settings menu and this is the new revamp settings icon. As you could see, the volume panel is also the new one. You could also add a device over here or change the audio settings, ringtones, vibrations, alarm tone from this section. Apart from that, let's access the system menu. And in the gestures, quick tap. Let's have a look. Let me take take a screenshot on back type twice. Let me see if it's working or not. Well, currently it's not working. I don't know why. Haptic feedback. Let me set it to medium and I don't know why that's not working. Let me try any other thing. Let's launch an app and the app should be, let's say Google Chrome. Well, even this is not working for now. So this feature is not working as expected. All, although it's showing that the haptic feedback, the tap has been detected, but still it's not working for some reason. Either we have to do a UI restart or this feature might work in the subsequent build. It might be a bug or issue with this build. Let's try to take a screenshot. This is working as expected. And, uh, and about, okay, just one more thing. Last one is the screen gestures. Let's say draw a V to open the, let's say dialer. And let's see. So that is working around the well and good. No issue whatsoever in this feature as well. And there are quite a lot of gestures as you could see. You could assign all the gestures to these tweaks. That's quite a handy feature. Apart from that, uh, let me see what else it has to offer. In the wallpaper and style section, you may choose the theme from here as you could see. And the color will change accordingly. You may also change more colors from here or go to this tab and change the colors from this section switch between the dark and the light theme from here let's go back to the default theme and likewise you can also change the lofting clock style from here let's choose this one and let me now show you how it looks let's lock the device and as you could see if you have a notification it will be at the top left remove this it will be at the center of the screen and apart from that go to the home screen tab you may enable the theme icons and they should now be implemented or you may also change the app grid for me it's the 5 cross 5 and that is the maximum as well and apart from that let's have a look at the home settings from here so there's nothing fancy as such all of these are just the basic one so guys just one more thing is remaining 
as I have told you, you could even root the ROM via the kernel SU next. So let's get this job done as well. Go to the downloads tab from here and from here get hold of the app, the kernel SU next app from here. Apart from that, we will also try out the SU FS as well. But first, let's use the kernel SU next app. So go there, ex expand this assets section, and from here scroll down and download the APK file, which should be somewhat here. This is the APK file. Get hold of the APK file once you have got the APK file. Transfer the file onto your phone as well. So let me do that as well. The APK file should be somewhat kernel SU next. Please use the kernel SU next app and not the kernel SU. Both are different, and in this ROM, you'll have to use the kernel SU next app. Keep this point in mind. So with that said, let's transfer the file onto our phone, the kernel SU next. And let's launch the file manager app so over here. Got it, allow, got it. Then APK file is here settings allow from this source install and okay one more thing the app is installed now open it so it's not working in the lds mode and even the sus fs mod is supported as well so let's do one thing again go to my guide and from here download the mod of sus fs and we now have the mod this is the zip file so download the zip file as well onto your phone and it should be on, on my pc just give me a second this is the mod transfer the mod file over here and once you've done the transfer, go to the module tab of kernel SU next, tap on install and choose the module file from here, the SU FS mod, which is this one, tap on OK and it's now flash, then tap on reboot. The phone will now boot to the OS and we will now have a look at the SU FS mod as well. Apart from that, let me open one important point in the SU FS. Once you go there, click on this and from here, hit the icon of custom settings. I will show you that as well for the time being let's wait for the phone to boot to the os this will take around i guess four to five more seconds and then we will have a look at the SUS fs mod as well and with this we are now inside the os now launch the kernel su next app let's place it in the home screen open it and you could now see it's now installed SUS fs go to module from here is the working in the search mode as you could see open it from this icon and it's now up and running you may also type on custom SUS FS settings and from here these are all the options as you could see first one is the height custom ROM in this regard you will get the following options the height custom ROM path height vendor SE policy height compact matrix and the height spoof the service list so you may enable the toggle which is in sync with your requirement next up if you have flashed the GFs as well you may hide the GFs as well which is in my case I have a GF package then if you're using the YouTube revans app you may enable this toggle as well. Then you must spoof the CMD line and spoof the hide the case loop as well. And if you're using a LSP framework, you may hide that as well using the same toggle. Then apart from that, there are a th three manual toggles. But please don't use the manual option because they might lead to a soft or a bootloop state. For the custom SUS path, SUS mount, and the try unmount, all these might prove to be a risky approach. If you're not sure, then please leave them or you may end up in a bootloop or a soft break state. So you may either use these option or go to main menu and carry out the tools from here and that's just about it so as you might be aware the, the pixel os is a clean stock ui experience with without any major features such as in the case of cr droid or evolution x or even the rising os over here you will not get any such tweaks or feature it's just a clean stock experience and it's the around i guess it's the best one in getting this job done without any fancy feature of lotware and on that note we round up this video if you have any query with regard to any of the steps let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.